All right, welcome everybody to Magnificent Moose in Maine. We are going to go down to Jade, who is at Maine Wildlife Park in Gray. All right, welcome everyone. I just wanna ask really quickly, Laura, if you can hear me. It just started to pour. Uh, can hear you just fine. Hopefully the moose won't mind the rain. All right, so welcome everyone. My name is Jade and I'm an educator for the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife here in Maine. And today we're at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray. Um, which is a part of the main department of inland fisheries and wildlife and here at the park we have many types of native maine wildlife we have black bears owls snakes turtles bobcats beavers and of course moose and all the animals are here because they can no longer live in the wild um, it's for a number of different reasons some of them are orphaned um, injured some of them were even illegal pets that are now human dependent, um, but all of them can't live in the wild on their own anymore. Here's one of our moose joining us now. This is one of the female moose here at the park. The female moose are called cows. So this is our cow here at the park. And um, if you wanna learn more about the park itself, you can go to mainewildlifepark.com to learn more about the park. And moose are one of the most iconic animals in Maine. They are one of the main attractions for both residents and visitors um, that want to come to this state and see these huge animals. And moose are the largest land animal in Maine. Um, but, and we're gonna, oh, I'm gonna step over to this side too, because we have the bull moose over here. Could you push it a little more to the side? There you go. A little more. <laughs> Sorry, there's a pole there too, but. We, we can see him. If I can get, there we go. Good, okay. So moose are the largest species of deer. In North America, the deer family is also known as cervids. And these include the white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk, woodland caribou, and the barren ground caribou, which are often referred to as reindeer. And of course, the moose, which is what we're gonna focus on today. Some of the things that make moose so magnificent. So in Maine, the only native deer that we have are the white-tailed deer and moose. Byron is coming right over here to say hi. I think he's very curious about what we're doing. Try and get both of them. Yeah, let's just take a nice look at them right now. We can have a nice comparison of the, 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 the male and female here. So in the front closest to me, that's the bull moose here at the wildlife park. And a little bit further back, that's the cow. And they're very, very large. They're dark brown. They can weigh anywhere between 850 and over 1,100 pounds when they are full grown. The bulls will be closer to that kind of 1,100 pound um, mark, whereas the female cows will be closer to 600 or 800 pounds. <laughs> he loves hearing about himself right now. He's like, Jade. Keep talking about me. <laughs> when they're newborns, they only weigh 25 pounds and they can gain over two pounds every day while they're nursing. So they put on weight really, really quickly and grow very fast. And if their weight isn't enough, we can also look at their height. So an adult moose can stand up to seven feet tall. And I myself am about five and a half feet tall. And at Byron's shoulder, so it's not even at the top of his antlers or at his head, but actually where their shoulder is. <laughs> Thanks, Byron. He just shook his water right onto me. <laughs> um, he can be another foot and a half taller than me at his shoulder. So 
very, very tall animals. And I'm sure you've also noticed this, um, his antlers growing on top of his head right now. And we'll talk about these huge antlers and why they lug them around. So antlers are one of the features of deer. Uh, the whole deer family, they will have antlers. And the bull moose grow and shed their antlers each year for the breeding season. And the breeding season is called rut, R-U-T. And they use their antlers to show dominance. Um, they also protect their eyes and their face when they are sparring, so when they're fighting with other bulls. They'll also rub their antlers in their urine, and that scent actually entices the cows um, during that breeding season, during the rut. So why don't they keep these antlers all year? I have here a bear moose antler, and it's huge. They are very, very heavy. So this antler weighs about 15 pounds, and it's actually a lot lighter when it's not on their bodies. They lose moisture um, after they shed them. So when the antler is actually intact on their bodies, it weighs even more than that. But this one on its own weighs about 15 pounds. So multiply that by two, and their antlers will be different from each other. They're not identical on each side, um, but that's over 30 pounds carried on their head. So that's a lot of weight to carry around and they don't need to carry all that weight over the course of the entire year. So they shed those antlers when they are not um, using them during that breeding season. I also have a um, deer antler here. So this is from a buck. This is from a male deer, white-tailed deer. So they both grow antlers and they both shed them. Um, that's what makes um, a difference between antlers and horns. So antlers are shed for different seasons, but horns um, stay with the animals and grow with them throughout the year. So big size difference between the buck, that deer antler and the moose antler, but they do the same things. They grow them and shed them and they grow them in a very similar way. The bull moose will grow their antlers in early spring. So Byron here just started growing his antlers um, this spring and they're already pretty large. And then they shed them after the breeding season um, in very early winter. And they have very strong neck muscles to help hold their heads up and carry these antlers, but they are solid bone. So it is very heavy. And antlers are one of the fastest growing tissues of any animal. So how do they grow so quickly? This here is a picture of Byron's velvet. So that, those hairs covering his antlers is called velvet and they're very fuzzy and they only cover the antlers while they're growing. And they carry nutrient rich blood to that growing bone. And those antlers can grow nearly an inch every single day while they're growing their antlers. They grow very, very quickly. So the velvet carries that nutrient rich blood and then their hormones, those chemicals in their bodies spike. So in the bulls, their testosterone spikes around September and this causes that velvet to shed off and the bone to harden. And that's when they're left with those bare, fully grown antlers. This is an image of some trees that have some moose activity on them. So when their testosterone spikes and that velvet starts to shed, they will scrape their antlers on the trees to help um, tear the velvet and reveal that hardened bone antler underneath. So if you see trees like this, that's a good sign of some moose in the area um, starting to go into that rut. And some people believe that you can age a moose based on their antlers. Um, but that's not really true. Um, the antlers are different with each individual moose. Each moose is gonna be unique and their um, nutrition um, varies greatly year to year. So every year based on their nutrition, their antlers will grow differently as well. Um, and there's sort of an age tipping point. So they'll have their sexually prime years where they'll usually um, grow some of their larger best antlers. Um, but once they get into their teenage years, if they live that long, 
um, you'll see a decline in that antler size because they're not as um, in their like sexual prime anymore. So they're, they might not grow as large of antlers then, but you can't count the points on them and you can't look at just the size of the antlers to age a moose. And usually the maximum antler growth is around age five and it starts to decline when they reach their teenage years. And moose being as large as they are require a lot of food. So moose are herbivores. That means they eat leaves and twigs from trees. They do not graze on grass. Instead, they eat browse. So this behind me is an example of the moose browse here at the park. And these are some of the same types of trees that they would be eating in the wild. So some of their favorite trees are um, aspen, birch, and maple, um, some willow or ash. Here we have a lot of maple and some ash mixed in. Um, they eat a lot of this browse and we constantly have to be um, providing browse for them. It's the main component of their diet. And in the winter, they'll also eat some balsam firs um, when all the leaves on the other trees have turned and those uh, leaves are absent during the winter. Moose are ruminants. This means they can digest the cellulose from plants and plant cellulose is very tough. It is a difficult food to extract those nutrients that they need from. So they have a very special digestive tract um, that takes a, a lot of time and energy to extract those nutrients, um, but they have special ruminant digestion to help them do that. So this form of digestion is complex and it's only possible with the help of some bacteria. So they have microorganisms that live in their digestive tract and these help break down that plant cellulose. And this kind of digestion also results in a lot of gas. So the moose here at the park are extremely gassy. No offense to them, they can't help it. It's because of that um, microorganisms and that bacteria in their gut helping break down the cellulose. I have here the lower jaw from a moose. So we're gonna look at these teeth. They have very flat, broad teeth. And those are for grinding up plants. So that's like one of the very first parts of their digestion is using their front teeth to pluck and grab um, twigs and leaves from the trees and then grinding up those plants as much as they can in their mouth. And they like a, um, like other ruminants, they're gonna kind of chew their cud. So they're gonna chew up the, that plant matter to try and break it down as much as possible. So these are those back molars and they are for grinding and chewing. And then these front ones, these are those incisors and those are for collecting brows, those are for plucking and grabbing. And there's this big space in the middle where their teeth are absent. And this is called the diastema. So this is that space between those front um, teeth for plucking and the back teeth for grinding. And we cut tons, and I mean literally tons of brows for the moose here every year. Um, and unlike their wild relatives, we also supplement their diet with grain. Here is a picture of over two pallets of grain and that much grain will feed our two adult moose here at the park for about two months. So we have to feed them a lot. And that is of course on top of all the brows that we're constantly collecting and providing for them too. They also receive some probiotics and that helps support their ruminant gut. So unlike their wild um, moose relatives, um, we have to help support that ruminant gut because they aren't getting the same diet that they would be in the wild to support their gut. I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit here because a female came back over to hang out. All right. This is the cow. So you can see she doesn't have those big antlers. Um, very, very rarely the females in the wild have actually been seen with little tiny um, antlers or little tiny buds. Um, and that's usually due to some kind of like hormonal um, imbalance or change, but the cows 
most of the time will not have antlers. It's very, very rare um, for the cows to ever have antlers. And one of the biggest reasons you will not find moose at many other animal care facilities is because they require so much food. So we have to give them a huge quantity of food and we also need to constantly monitor their digestive health. So they come in as calves, as these little calves that are orphaned. Um, and from the very start of their lives, we have to keep a very close eye on their digestive health and make sure that we are doing everything we can to provide as natural of a diet as we can to them to keep their guts healthy. Now, even though moose are very large, they can be difficult to find unless you know where to look. And even then, there is no guarantee that you're gonna spot a moose out in the wild. Moose are most active during dusk and dawn, especially during the hot months these animals do not like the heat. A day like today where it is um, very soggy and a little bit cooler, that is their happy place. They like it when there is colder, um, less heat. The summer days are not very comfortable for them. They are adapted for living in colder weather. They have fur that is very thick and dark and it is for keeping them warm. We can see um, her fur behind us, she is starting to shed um, some of her winter coat out. So a lot of that thick winter coat, you can see kind of falling off her body and shedding off um, for a little bit thinner summer coat. I can get a closer um, example of their um, fur here. So this is part of a moose fur. You can see it's thick and it's dark brown. And they also have a special adaptation. Um, their hairs, they actually have hollow hairs. And this is another um, added adaptation to help keep them warm. Those hollow hairs can trap air close to their bodies. Um, so it helps in those uh, cold months when they kind of get form their own like insulated jacket on their bodies with that air, hot air trapped in those hollow hairs. And again, they're gonna shed a lot of that thick fur out in the summer when they, we have these warmer months. We can also look at these legs. She is nicely showing us her very, very long back legs here. And they have these very long legs for chuggering through thick snow and also for walking and wading in the water. So they have these very long legs. They also have a long tongue and long faces and necks. And that is for um, walking through the water and eating aquatic vegetation and reaching those aquatic plants. And also for reaching um, up into the trees and stripping the leaves and twigs from the trees. So they're very well adapted for their habitat and for their diet. And they can be very tough to see in the woods with their camouflage. Um, they're most often can spot them on the water. So if you can get on the water, um, if you're kayaking or fishing, um, you might have better luck seeing a moose then um, because they're not blending in as well with the trees with their, their fur. And you can find them at different areas during different seasons. So during the spring and like summer months, the bowls tend to go to a higher elevation where the temperatures are cooler and the cows tend to stay at a lower elevation where there's a lot more soft woods. So this means that there's more food for them. So at this time of year, the cows often have calves with them. So if the more food that they can find, the less time they're gonna spend foraging, and that's more time that they can spend watching their vulnerable calves. Their vulnerable calves um, are, are one of the only times that these moose really have um, natural predators. The adult moose don't really have any natural predators um, because the adults are difficult to kill. However, the young calves and the newborns, they will fall prey to animals like coyotes or bears. Um, again, they will only weigh somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds. Um, so it's much easier to take down a small animal like that than their 600 to 800 pound mom that is with them. So she wants to keep a close eye on that baby um, and again, they're gonna grow really fast, but 
The mom wants to keep an eye on them and stay as close to protect them as she can while they're still small. And uh, moose do face a lot of other threats. So vehicle collisions, legal and illegal harvesting, um, disease, starvation, and even accidental deaths um, like drowning or falling um, are some of the other threats that these moose face. Um, so not so much of a predator, but some other things that threaten these moose. And um, they do have a fairly new threat that is really hurting some of our moose population. And that is due to environmental and climate changes. So the warmer climate means that disease and parasites can expand their range and they will affect moose more aggressively. So we'll talk about ticks really quickly. So winter ticks do not spread disease like other ticks, but they will attach by the thousands and they will stay attached for months. This causes blood loss, hair loss, and behavioral changes um, that lead to death, especially in young um, moose during their first year of life. And if you wanna learn more about ticks, you can go to mefishwildlife.com slash winter tick um, and learn a lot more about um, the winter ticks and how they're affecting different animals here in Maine. Now let's talk about how you can help moose and how the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife helps moose. So some of the ways that we can help moose every day. Um, safe driving. I mentioned that vehicle collisions um, are the cause or a threat to different moose. And that is due to their height. They are six to seven feet tall, which means their eyes are higher than most headlights can catch. And they also have very dark bodies. So it is extremely difficult to see these moose at night. And again, they're most active at dusk and dawn. So right when the sun is setting and when the sun is coming up and it's very low light, that is when these moose are most active. So unlike the white-tailed deer that are shorter and some other animals that we can see their um, reflective eyes at night, these moose are up over most of our headlights so we won't see them until it is too late. So when you are driving, especially if it's on dark, winding roads in dense moose populations, you wanna use your high beams. Um, if you can, just avoid driving at night, especially during those peak collision times of year and in certain habitats and regions, just especially during around sunset and before sunrise. Um, and of course, slow down and follow speed limits, um, especially again, on these dark winding roads, you never know what is around the next turn. And you do not wanna hit one of these um, super, super huge animals. Um, it will not only hurt the moose, but a lot of times those vehicle collisions are really bad for the people involved as well. So we wanna be careful. Another thing that we can practice is safe moose viewing. You wanna respect these animals' space, especially during those times of year, during the breeding season, um, or when the cows have their calves with them. Um, they can be very hormonal bulls during the rut and they will charge and they will kick. Um, they go kind of crazy with those hormones and they think that anything big, like maybe our vehicles, could be another animal, um, kind of in their territory or threatening them or uh, competing with them. So they will charge and they will kick and they are very, very strong and powerful. And again, those protective cows with their calves, they will also charge and kick to protect their babies. So you wanna um, stay in your vehicle, never heckle or um, try and harass these animals, give them their space and just respect, um, respectfully watch them from a safe distance. And for more information about how the department is um, taking care of our moose population, you can look at studying and managing Maine's moose. One of our moose biologists, Lee Cantor, um, is going to be having a presentation about the Maine population status, um, adaptive management studies, winter ticks, and some of the next steps that we're taking in moose management here in Maine. Um, and that is this Saturday, the 13th at 11 a.m. And um, there's our link on our page where you can get all of these um, virtual um, moose activities for this weekend. Um, after that is then the moose hunting permit drawing. That'll be right after the moose management talk. So 
lots of exciting virtual opportunities to learn more about moose in Maine, and then also find out about the moose hunting permit drawing. Um, and you can find that on our website as well. So I've talked a lot about moose and I'm sure that we have some questions. I would love to answer any questions that have come in about the magnificent moose in Maine. Uh, there was a question about um, how do you get the moose at Maine Wildlife Park and do you have any baby moose at the park right now? That is a good question. So we do not have any baby moose at the park right now. We only have the two moose that you um, saw here behind me. So we have two adults. We have one bull moose adult and he is, ooh, I wanna say eight or nine years old this year. I would need to check. Um, and uh, Annie, the female cow, she is getting much older. She is, uh, I think, 11 years old this year. Um, so she's getting older and they are both the only two moose at the park right now. Um, both of them came as calves. So all the moose that we do have here at the park um, come as calves and they are orphaned. So that is usually due to um, a vehicle collision that is reported to um, like game wardens here in the state. So they arrive on the scene and a lot of the times they immediately realize that it is a cow that is lactating. So if it is a lactating cow, that means that her calf is probably somewhere close by and no longer has a mother and no longer can get milk. Um, so a lot of times those baby calves, um, if they are in um, okay health, then we can try and um, supplement them and get them um, up and moving again. But because they don't have their mother's milk and a natural moose diet, um, they cannot survive on their own in the wild. They need all those good nutrients and everything that they would normally get from their mothers. Um, so they come here as calves and um, we never get adult moose here at the park. So it's only gonna be a calf. So both Byron and Annie here at the park um, arrived when they were still little calves and are now full grown adults. That's great. And somebody wanted to know how long can moose really live for on average? Yeah, so again, that has changed a lot. Um, over the years, one of the big things is some of these new threats that moose are facing. So it used to be that moose lived a lot longer in the wild than they did in captivity. Um, so that goes back to that diet again. We have learned so much about moose digestion and how to take care of the moose here at the park um, to help them live longer, healthier lives. So before the last few years, having an 11 year old moose here at the park would have been very, very rare. Um, we have had some of the oldest moose in captivity that we know of um, across the U.S. and possibly in other places in the world as well, um, because we've learned about that their diet care and their digestive health. Um, moose in the wild um, rarely get into their teens. They might reach those teenage years, but again, those new um, threats that they're facing are really hurting, um, especially the newborn and like first year, those yearling moose. So they're having a little bit of trouble getting their populations um, steady due to some of those young moose dying off and not living to adulthood to then breed and um, continue passing those genes and everything along. So it used to be that moose lived longer in the wild and not as long in captivity. And that's kind of swapped um, due to a lot of different factors. That's great, thanks. And we are getting some questions about moose ticks and moose diseases. And we just wanna remind people that this Saturday, June 13th at 11 a.m., our, our main moose biologists um, will be having a talk. So if you're interested in learning more about the, the ticks and the diseases that, uh, that face moose, please tune in then or check out our websites. Um, another question was, how much do they eat actually? You mentioned they eat a lot, but do you know how much browse they actually eat in a day? So we really cannot give them enough browse. They can't get too much of it. So for example, what's here behind me is about one um, pickup truck full, but during the um, summer and spring especially, we have interns here at the Wildlife Park, and it is their full-time 
um, internship of just foraging for browse for these moose. So they go out every day and they fill several truckloads with browse and give it to the moose. And then they come back the next day and they remove the browse that has been picked at and eaten and completely stripped and they refill it again. So they just kind of rinse and repeat that same cycle. And it is truckloads of browse that we feed these moose every day. Uh, another question that we are getting is how many moose are at Maine Wildlife Park? So there are two moose at the wildlife park. Um, there's one male moose, there's one bull, and there's one female moose, there's one cow. Um, we at most have had uh, three or four moose at one time. Um, and we actually have a newly expanded um, enclosure that is brand new as of this year. And it is a winter moose enclosure um, so that we can kind of cycle our moose even better um, through different areas. And the current area that they're in is very large. If you've ever been to the park before, um, these are huge compartments and they are as um, natural to a moose habitat as we can make it. So they have tons and tons of trees and lots of space to move around. Although they do spend a lot of their days laying down and conserving their energy, um, finding a shady spot or a muddy spot to kind of just hang out for most of the day. But they do sometimes walk all the way from one end to the next if they're having an active, an active day, um, especially in these cooler temperatures. But when it's hot, they kind of just find a nice muddy shaded spot to hang out for most of the day. Just get up to have their food. <laughs> Um, another question is, do you have any types of volunteer programs where people can come help at the park and does it involve moose? Yeah, so most of our volunteer programs um, are not direct animal contact. Um, the only people here at the park who are going to have direct contact to the animals are staff. Um, and of course, that's for the safety and well-being of our animals. Um, but we do have many, many, many different volunteer um, programs here at the park. So if you are interested in that, you can go to mainwildlifepark.com and there is a tab just for um, volunteers and it talks about all different volunteer opportunities. Um, we, when we are uh, open, our operations are over 50% volunteer run. Um, so we have a lot of volunteers that help us do a number of different things here at the park. Um, we rely on volunteers a lot for help. That's great. And I do just want to remind people, because we're still getting a few more um, disease uh, questions about Maine's moose, that this Saturday, June 13th at 11 a.m., um, you can get more information about things like that, about the management, about the moose population, um, and, and ticks that are threatening the moose. So please tune in this Saturday, June 13th at 11 a.m. for that. Um, one more question somebody had was more about the park. Um, do you have bears and what other really interesting fun animals are at Maine Wildlife Park? Yes, so again, all of our animals here are native to Maine um, and we have a huge variety of species. There are over 30 different species of animals here at the park. Um, we have black bears, um, we have a bunch of different felines. So we have some bobcats and lynx. We have a lot of small mammals, so we have um, beaver, porcupine, an albino raccoon, um, and a lot of different species of birds also. We have a lot of raptors, um, so different owls, hawks, and eagles. Um, we have some ground bird species, so we also have turkeys, um, some pheasant. The only like non-native species at the park is the peacock, so they are a domesticated peacock that have just been kind of grandfathered over the years here at the park. Um, so they're the only, I guess, exotic species that would be here at the park, but they're a domesticated peacock and coyote. Oh, there's so many. I'm trying to think of them all, but different fox, lots and lots of different species. That's great. And again, the uh, Maine Wildlife Park is opening up on Monday, but it's reservation only. So you have to visit mainewildlifepark.com for more information. 
And one more moose related question for today. Um, what do you do with all the shed antlers? That's a very good question. We have um, stored the majority of the antlers from our moose here at the park. And we use them and we submit the different data on their um, size and growth and weight and all of those kinds of things um, to track those moose antlers. Um, the moose antler in the wild, um, unless you find it quickly, they're actually eaten. So the calcium is really nice for some um, ground mammals. So different rodents and things will actually chew on them and gnaw on them. The uh, deer antler here actually has some gnaw marks, some tooth teeth marks on it. And that was probably this antler wasn't found immediately after they had shed them. So some rodents had already gotten to it and started gnawing on them. Um, but it's one of the nice things about here at the park is we will notice from one day to the next immediately if uh, one of the bull moose has shed their antlers. So we can keep an eye out and try and grab them. Um, this one here is actually marked. So we label them with the specific identification of the moose that it came from and the year that it was from. And again, these um, antlers can tell us a lot about the nutrition um, and health of our moose because the antlers um, will grow better if they have good nutrition and good health. So we want to track our moose antlers to make sure our moose are at the best health that we possibly can. All right, that's it for our questions right now, but please feel free to send us any emails or message us if you have more questions about moose. Yes, thank you all. Those are some really great, great questions. I hope I was able to answer as many of them as possible, but like Laura said, um, let us know if you um, want any more follow-up or have any other questions and we can try and get those answers for you as well. I wanna just remind everyone again that on Saturday, there is another um, moose talk that is specifically about um, moose management and um, different things that are happening for the department um, for the moose here in Maine, as well as the moose hunting permit drawing. So those are both on Saturday and you can find the times and schedules for those virtual events on our website at mefishwildlife.com. And I want to, our male moose is still over here. So we'll have him see us off and say goodbye. So thank you all again for coming. And thank you for being such a good participant moose here at the wildlife park. Thank you.